Okay, guys, this actually goes with the video that I released yesterday. It was about a 20-minute video of the uh, walking around the property, seeing various projects underway and the planning that's going on. This would be, if you've seen that video, the second set of stuff in it where we're talking about the new build of the pond and the wicking beds. I did take some B-roll of this, and I overlaid it in Sony Vegas so that you guys could see it when I was talking about it and have a better, more clearer picture of it. For some reason, it didn't show up in the final edit. I don't really understand why, but it takes a long time to render out a video like that in HD, so it's easier to just append this, and I can link from there and back to there so you can see it. So what this is, this is a timber frame pond and um, a grow bed system that we're going to be installing this winter so that we're ready to run with it by spring. It's going to be pretty cool. What this is going to be is this is the pond itself right here. These are going to be 10-foot 4x4s. Uh, actually, 12-foot 4x4s this way and 10-foot uh, 4x4s this way with a rubber liner, just like the other wood frame pond uh, that I've built. It's an 8x8. A smaller version thereof was kind of our test case, and we had a perfect place to do it that size. So we're going to go bigger with this one. It's about double the, the, the gallons of capacity of water there uh, and a lot more side rails. So around here, there will be... Um, what I do is I build towers out of center blocks, and again, you can look at some of my other videos on the timber frame pond, but I build towers out of center blocks in the water, and I lay 36-inch uh, long tiles on top of them to make benches. So this is like basically a whole little habitat for fish under here where they can go underneath, but there's also like a, you know, uh, about a one foot wide out from the edge, uh, a couple inches deep water shelf, and you can set flower pots and, and things in there, and that makes basically wicking beds as well. So you end up being able to grow all the way around it. There'll also be some ebb and flow beds. We'll probably do just like we did with the smaller pond. Four ebb and flow beds, one in each corner. Uh, there'll be a pump in the pond that runs those ebb and flow beds. That will pump out of this pond into um, two ebb and flow beds up here. And these will be up high. These will be shallow ebb and flow beds full of reeds or water chests. No, we haven't actually decided what we're going to plant them yet with. But these, all of these structures that look like this, these are all your grow bed structures. This is going to be a unique one in that we're going to have a 300-gallon sump at the bottom and then the grow beds on top. And it's all going to be closed in with a facade so it matches and looks nice with the, uh, the pond itself. So what will happen is water will pump into the grow beds, fill them up, ebb and flow down, and drop into the sump. Water will also be distributed by the pump out of here into the grow beds that are here, five grow beds here, five grow beds here, five grow beds here. Um, these will be made with the 100-gallon stock tanks done end-to-end -end this way so that they all can be plumbed and connected here. And actually, the pipe will come through the facade on the inside, which will make service work a hell of a lot easier. So basically, it's going to be like one big giant manifold there. Those... And this is why we did this design here. All of these grow beds are just going to be very simple, 100-gallon tanks uh, with water level set based on a stand-up in them. Water comes in, flows back out, and then dirt's filled all the way up to the top of the bed. And there's a pipe there that's an excluding pipe, keeps the dirt from falling in, and little stand-ups inside that pipe. I've shown that in other videos. If you don't understand that, um, you can look at my other videos and it'll make sense. Or maybe I'll do another video this week. Uh, to show you what I mean by that to make it more clear. But just to understand, water will flow through the bottom of these grow beds that are all just big wicking beds that we can plant into. It will return to the sump. The sump will be run with a float valve, and when the sump gets full, the sump will pump back into the main pond. What that does is create a system that works like this. When it's going to freeze, we can just shut off the flow of water to here. And this system with its own pump will run itself. And we can come over and open a, a drain valve probably down right about here. It's probably going to be the place that makes the most sense. Uh, and we'll open that drain valve and all the water will go into the swale that's right here. Uh, down here is where the swale is. Back here is where my current aviary is. There's a slight flow this direction. So that'll dump all that water into the swale, which is a good place for it to go. And then nothing here will freeze. And then since this is self-contained, nothing can really go wrong with it. And by keeping that water moving on full, full blow um, in here with that pump, it won't freeze up. So that's kind of an appendage to uh, yesterday. And again, it's, uh, it, it's really pretty easy to understand. But it gives you a good idea of the layout and how, like I've said yesterday, it's very Japanese, very... 
um, maze-like, very symmetrical. And the top of these rails is about 37 to 39 inches. We haven't decided exactly how it's going to work out yet. So it's going to be rated perfect, kind of bar height. Cool place to hang out. Uh, with uh, nice, nice, long, narrow pergolas over at least these two. Yeah, on eight foot, uh, four by four. This could be really awesome.